Welcome, as Civilnet continues to cover the Armenian Society of Fellows Conference here in Dilijan. I am very pleased to be joined by Tamara Babayan, Professor of Computer Information Systems at Bentley University. So, Professor Babayan, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to Civilnet um, and um, share my experiences. Sure. So, to start off, just so our watchers can get a better understanding of yourself and your profession. Can you explain a bit about what you do? You are a lecturer, you have also um, been involved in a number of initiatives in Armenia, but when we say computer information systems, comes to mind things, a, a whole swathe of things, AI, human, computer, communication, all these sorts of things, but in your, by, by your own tongue, what is it exactly entailing your profession? Um. Uh, I'm a professor of computer information systems at the Business University. Uh, Bentley is a business university. Mm -hmm. And uh, my background is computer science. So I am a computer scientist who's working in a business school, which means that I uh, work more on applied problems um, and in, in computing. And um, I would characterize my work in, as working in the area of intelligent systems and collaborative systems. And what I do is um, develop systems, show how systems can be developed that employ intelligence to, to um, create uh, systems that actually work collaboratively with their user, that aren't just merely a tool, but that are optimized in a way that um, creates the most uh, efficient interaction between the person and the computer systems. And um, when it comes to the latest and developments in technology and uh, in science, in computer science, um, I see my role and what I do is to bring these um, uh, new representations, new algorithms, AI, um, different kinds of AI visualizations into the work, workplace systems. You see uh, most of these technologies, when they're developed in computer science laboratories, they are developed as standalone applications. Even if you think of chat GPT, right? It's a standalone, it, uh, and I bring it up because it's the, sort of the latest, the greatest buzzword. Um, it, uh, it exists as a standalone um, website, right, that um, you can interact with and can do the, uh, several things for you. But um, my um, research is in how to take that technology and make it available, um, make it integrated within the context of business information systems, healthcare information systems, educational systems, um, which is not an easy thing to do, which is why we, we don't see these kinds of um, most powerful technologies embedded into our workplace systems. You know, uh, in the latest times, in the past decade, computers have learned to hear us, to see us, to understand us to some degree, to talk to us. But when it comes to um, sort of uh, applications and systems that people work, use in workplace every day, these um, technologies uh, did not make it there yet, right? And, and the reason for it, um, or they do make, um, make it there eventually, hopefully, uh, although, though not as fast as we wish, right? And the reason for it is that it is not that easy to take a technology and place it within um, the context of an information system or a workplace system. Mm. Um, it requires really um, understanding of, um, of the task, a very good understanding of the task, um, the context of the user, the con uh, and the understanding of um, what the system can do and what the user can do. And in order to create a, um, an effective collaboration between this computer system and the user, there are a lot of things that have to be thought out um, ahead of time. And, and so what's, what you see on the screen happening when the system is working with the user is not just a matter of you know, where you place your controls, you know, where the buttons are. It's, the, as one very smart person said, uh, human-computer collaboration is not screen deep. There's a lot that goes, um, uh, goes behind the screen, goes on behind the screen on the back end. You have to build the system in the right way. You have to take these standalone algorithms and adjust them for the context of this application. And that uh, very often 
uh, means very serious adjustments because, um, um, you know, there are several examples where technologies were taken and just kind of thrown into the application. And it turned out that the users do not accept it. They have, um, you know, hard time using it. Uh, it's just the, uh, the distribution of labor between what the system does and what the user does is not, um, is not optimal and is not really intuitive for uh, and does not support the kind of task the user does. And ASOF had this mission statement of wanting to take higher education research um, to the next level. This is a very ambitious uh, target, but I'm wondering what is one policy not particularly something you would like to help with or uh, something like that. A policy you would like to see enacted in Armenia, a significant change with regards to your sphere of expertise. Um, policy, uh, I think my dream is being, I'm, a, I'm an alumna of FISMAT school and also I'm an alumna of uh, the um, applied math department of the uh, university, state university. State university. Uh, Yerevan State University. And I'm a big fan. I think that the education I have received here uh, was the um, ultimate basis for my success in, uh, in the West. And um, I would like to see um, our educational structures um, to. Um, to work to, to their potential um, because there is uh, a lot that can be done to um, in order to create uh, a more active um, research life, a much more up-to-date education, um, a much more uh, engaged student body and just universities in, um, in the United States are these centers of, of cultural and uh, scientific and uh, exchanges. There are vibrant institutions with a lot of things going on. Going on. And I, um, I would love for that to, to happen in Armenia. And um, I don't know if that's a policy, but that's something I also think that um, Education. Having worked in education, I think that almost all problems can be fixed with education. Yeah, because your focus <laughs> has very much been on on, on education. Yes. We know your, your your field of expertise, but you've been in, involved in initiatives to mm -hmm. do with education in Armenia. I believe here at ASOF as well, you are it were uh, put in the education task mm -hmm. force. Um, so. At the same time, I'm thinking, I'm sure there's a lot of buzz amongst Armenian students with regards to, to AI and, and, and computer information systems. I mean, it's interesting that you've put such a focus on, on, on education in particular, rather than, I don't know, a, a, a different sort of solution approach. Um, why is that so important in your mind? Well, first of all, um Personally, um, I think that education opens doors, and I think education will open doors for Armenia into the uh, maybe the rest of the world. Uh, it's one one way to open up the society and open up the for for collaborations with with um, country, other um, countries uh, with the rest of the world on different kinds of projects. Uh, that's that's one reason. Uh, secondly, you know, when I ask, yes, I. I I am um, a computer scientist and I actually did um, participate in some initiatives that are directly related to um, you know, uh, uh, computer science and um, educating students within that realm. Um, and um, when I ask my friends here, um, what, you know, where should I put my, you know, my efforts um, now, they say education. And so um, these, uh, so I think mm, so many people in Armenia realize that um, that is very important for our country and that um, I would not be exaggerating by saying that um, in a sense, Amer Armenian education is in a state of crisis and urgent uh, action is needed. When you say Armenian education is in a state of crisis, do you mean uh, all the spheres or just higher education and, and, what, and how would you describe that to yeah. in layman's terms to our watchers uh -huh. was it the same when you for example were at the Yerevan State University and you created that basis mm -hmm. to go on 
mm-hmm. to do uh, to to the West to study there. Um, speaking about myself, um, uh, at the time, um, yes, I uh, the, the education I received here was excellent, and uh, I was very fortunate. And I think that uh, that fundamental strength still exists. Um, on the other hand, uh, there is a crisis of aging. Um, faculty uh, of higher higher um, education institutions. Um, there's a crisis of um, programs being very far behind uh, the, uh, the programs that are essential uh, subjects um, and, and skills that are being taught these days. The world is much faster now than 30 years ago when I left and science and the world develop much, much faster now. And, um, what we see is um, not many students go into graduate school um, and the graduate programs and undergraduate programs do not really um, prof- do not um, prepare the students and do not generate enough interest for them to go into graduate school um, uh, in order to become scientists, in order to become professors. and. Um, there's a crisis of actually, as far as I know, if, um, in terms of what I've learned at ASOF also, um, there are not enough teachers of, of for example, science, technology, um, education uh, uh, classes in, um, in rural regions. And um, at the same time, I know that the, the sort of the social sciences and um, what is actually known as language and writing classes, maybe in in the rest of the uh, in the Western world, um, is not taught um, with the same amount of critical thinking skills uh, that is required um, for us. So, um, and in order to uh, create science, you have to have a pipeline of people interested in it, um, and be that social science, history literature, music, um, all of that requires attention and that attention has to be uh, paid from from the school level indeed. And um, actually part of um, what I've done uh, since um, the end of war in 2020 was uh, um, to try and engage with, um, with students here and with professionals and um, social organizations, social enterprises, in order to reinvigorate the the educational context. Are they getting reinvigorated now? Are Um, you seeing the the buds? You know, yes, there are buds and there are wonderful organizations and wonderful initiatives. Uh, There's a lot of people, ASOF is one example, Uh where all these scientists, uh, but there are other um, initiatives, you know, that uh, that support soldier education, that uh, work with um, regions uh, children. There are all these, um, all these efforts that are coming from, uh, from, joining forces between the diaspora and some wonderful organizations here. However, they all have a very, they're um, at the point to point level, you know, and and my dream is to, and what I've been working on since, again, since the end of the war, is to bring it to a more systematic um, approach. <clears throat> For example, um, so that uh, things can be done on a broader scale uh, a larger scale and involve more people and therefore have more impact. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're saying the problem in, in the education sector is is multifaceted. It, it's to do with adapting to the times, interest, uh, geography, uh, the amount of people involved. What's interesting to me is that the government also recognizes that there are issues with education, but their solutions many find are very surface level. Some, uh, for example, to create an academic city to relocate universities. Um, you think that the issue with education is really multifaceted and much more complex than just Absolutely. relocation. <laughs> Absolutely, I think relocation has very I don't know. Um, I'm not aware of the, of, frankly, of the, of the entire plan, and I don't know what advantages it would 
bring. Uh, I wish I, maybe it's stated somewhere, but I haven't seen that. Um, indeed, I will tell you that I, um, the strength of an educational program is in its teachers, in the educators, uh, and its students, and in the products that they create. And building is the last thing there. Right. Uh, if you think um, there are multiple examples, um, I will not bring my example, for example, for instance. Um, you know, it, it's, um, I learned to program on paper, it, as, as weird ah. as it sounds, but okay. you know, I'm as old, uh, and that, to remember that Yerevan State University uh, Applied Math Department had barely computing facilities for students, right? Now, uh, and yet we were able to, um, to develop uh, skills. Of course, um, you know, in order to supplement, I then started working early and, you, you know, I found that uh, um, sort of computing outlet somewhere else in parallel with my schooling. But yes, indeed, the, the um, what I would, if you ask me what I, what I see as the greatest uh, a thing with the greatest potential for improving education is to open doors from Armenia to collaboration with all of us abroad. There's a number of us in whatever areas who are so interested in coming and contributing, uh, although um, not maybe on a point-to-point -point basis, but on a systematic, well-thought-out, program-based um, approach. And um, I think that would be um, the greatest, uh, in my opinion, the greatest opportunity and uh, to lift Armenian education is to open doors for all of us Armenians living all throughout the world to come and contribute and to work together to create these new programs, update uh, to you know to create uh, the necessary structures that reflect the best experiences in the world. Um, and I think that um, if that was allowed, um, we could raise the level of uh, our state education at, um, very quickly. Uh, maybe not very, very quickly, but <laughs> <laughs> sufficiently to um, produce, to, to overcome this crisis. Yes, and catch up with the world. Well. Oh yes, and, um, and become leaders in some, uh, in some respects. And um, I think there's so much passion after, um, after the war and so much desire uh, for, uh, in so many of us. Uh, we organized this Armenian, Armenians uh, Forward Together Forum in 2021 and 2022, um, uh, where we invited um, Basically, anybody to propose uh, a joint project, and uh, or you know, if it was an existing enterprise, to um, to propose uh, some way of extending their activities through collaborating with uh, Armenians throughout the world for the benefit. Our only um, d determining sort of acceptance criterion was that you had a, a thought out sort of agenda, and it was serving uh, the development of Armenia and Artsakh. And um, through that, I've, I've met so many people um, who have exceptional qualities and exceptional drive to help, um, help us overcome come this crisis and build um, strong and prosperous Armenia. And um, if the doors sort of were open on a broad level to this kind of input, I think that um, it would be very beneficial for, in particular, the educational uh, culture in Armenia. Okay, well, Professor Tamara Babayan, that was very insightful. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for hosting me here and uh, um, all the best. I am actually a big fan of your channel and uh, your programs. Um, uh, always looking forward to new, uh, to learning uh, new things about our, what's going on here uh, while living abroad. Okay, thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, Professor, mm -hmm. and thank you for joining us on CivilNet.